Hi. Um, didn't see you there. It's me, your boyfriend, girlfriend's, day friends, favorite content creator. And I was just looking at, don't mind the background, by the way. I was just looking at a couple of my videos, how they're performing. And this one video just, it's not doing what I thought it was going to do. I thought I would get like at least equal to the amount of subscribers I have because I now have like 2,100 subscribers, but this one's not even cracking a thousand. And so I'm just like, maybe I should delete my entire channel. No, that'd be a really rash decision. Actually, now I think about it, because I do have a rather small account, my expectations should be kind of tampered, right? Like I shouldn't be expecting my videos to get like hundreds of thousands of views because why would they? I'm a small YouTuber in a sea of YouTubers, especially in the gaming sphere, who is one of millions of people. There's really a low barrier for entry. So like really anyone can do what I do. There's nothing really inherently special about what I do. So it makes sense that not everyone will see my video. Huh. You know, when I look at it like that, when I tamper my expectation, it doesn't seem so bad to only have like 987 views on this video when I only have like 2,000 subscribers. That's actually not a bad uh, view to subscriber ratio. And my other videos are doing pretty well too. Some are exceeding my uh, subscriber numbers and some exceeded my previous subscriber numbers. So that's, that's pretty good, I would say. Anyways, we're doing a video about how uh, people aren't doing that thing. Aren't tapping on expectations. How many times have you heard this game has failed to meet expectations? I mean, the most recent example I could think of is uh, the new uh, Prince of Persia game, The Lost Crown. Great game. Didn't meet expectations, so there's no sequel and there's nothing else being developed for that. But then you also had Final Fantasy 16 and Final Fantasy 7 fail to meet expectations for Square Enix. Then you also had, you know, a lot of games from Microsoft failing to meet expectations. But I've always wondered who puts these expectations out there and why are these expectations seemingly unreachable, no matter how well a game does. A while ago, Hi-Fi Rush came out and it did fantastically great, great reviews, critically acclaimed, like won awards, and yet that got canned. Luckily, it got picked up by, I believe it was Crafton, but luckily it got picked up. But still, the evil within, it's done. No one's doing that anymore because that was part of uh, Tango. It's gone. No one's really using that unless Crafton also has the rights to that. I'm not sure. The Dead Space remake didn't meet expectations. So they're, they're putting the series on ice. And that was the same thing with Bioware, with uh, Andromeda, right? I, I just, I fail to understand what are these expectations? Are you not taking into consideration external factors? Because it looks like to me that when the world was shut down, if we could talk about like just COVID for a second, when the world was shut down and people weren't able to go out like they used to, they turned more to online entertainment. That's when streaming services really popped off. Hell, that's when like HBO Max, I believe, started. Um, you had an increase in Twitch and YouTube viewership. You have people getting record number of views on their streams, record number of subs, all this, right? Video games have been played at the wazoo. And then as life resumed or got as close to a level of normalcy as possible, people started doing what they used to do. Movie theaters were struggling for a long time. Now they're kind of working their way back. Although with the current model for movies, it's 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 a mess out there. Thank you, streaming services. But things are relatively back to the before time, so to speak. And so you would think these expectations for games would be tampered. Yet, for some reason, we have the line goes up mentality where a game that sells a million copies in a month is considered a failure, but another game that sells a million copies in a month is considered a success. We have these games that can sell 30 million copies, and that's just like, the expected norm. And I don't think people truly understand how many copies that is of something. A million is a lot, to be honest, especially when they're $70 a pop. You know, 
do some simple math. 30 million copies, $70 a pop. That's $210 million. Just, just, just right there. But you see, my thinking process is game budgets have ballooned to such an insane degree. And I think they balloon so much, not because of the emerging technologies, all that stuff, right? I think it has to do with the fact that these executives, these board members, these investors think if they put in a hundred million dollars, they'll get back a billion, right? They think the more money they put in, the higher ROI return on investment they'll get. It's like a, like an input output system, like, like our old math stuff, right? Where it's like X values, Y values. And the formula is like X cubed, whatever you get from X, you're going to get three times the output on Y. Right. And they have that mentality. And that's the only way I could think this makes sense. Cause if you look at games where like call of duty, like right? call of duty always makes money, right? It just, it's just a perennial money maker. The newest one comes out, I think tomorrow. And that's going to make like a bajillion dollars. But Call of Duty has a very strong install base. First person shooters in general are probably the, one of the most popular genres out there because they're so accessible. You don't have to know as much to play a first person shooter. It's not like an RPG where there's different rules depending on the game or whatever. It's like right trigger shoots, left trigger zooms in, jump, you know, you know face buttons do like grenades and shit. Like they're pretty more or less similar. So they have ease of access and familiarity. So they're easy to do. But we have these corporations that think that everything should make Call of Duty money, even things that aren't Call of Duty. Like they wanted Dead Space to make Call of Duty money, which it, it doesn't do. Even like the most successful, like the survival horror genre, which at this point is the Resident Evil series. They don't make Call of Duty money. The Resident Evil series doesn't sell that much compared to like the big movers, right? But it's still a very popular, successful series in its own right. And we, I say we a lot, right? But we're not executives, but I feel like in the gaming area, we have this tendency to overlook those things. We have this tendency to not understand and look at things within their genre. Even if we go outside of movies, or sorry, outside of video games, talk like movies, right? There are certain genres that more people will see that make more money. Horror movies, are great because they usually have a very low cost and high return on investment. But horror movies aren't making, for the most part, Marvel movie money, right? I've yet to see a horror movie make a billion dollars in a weekend. I've yet to see that happen. And it probably won't ever happen. And that's fine because within the genre, right, they're making money hand over fist. In video games, we have different genres because they have different audiences. You're never going to have a horror game outcompete a big, huge AAA title. You're just you're not. A horror game is not going to outsell like uh, Call of Duty. It's not going to outsell like God of War. It's not going to outsell like huge IPs because they're just not for that. It's a very niche genre. It's gotten bigger and bigger, but comparatively still niche. I understand that from a gaming perspective. I understand that. If I'm playing Silent Hill 2 and someone else is playing Modern Warfare and we're both streaming it on Twitch and we have, like I said, equal amounts of followers, the person streaming the more popular games probably gonna get more views, right? Because the game is more popular. It has bigger base. It has more money involved. That's fine. That doesn't make another game less successful. But in the eyes of this investors, that's the issue. My game's not making a trillion dollars, so it's bad. The Prince of Persia, the Lost Crown game is the best assassin, oh, sorry, oof, is the best Prince of Persia game to come out in decades by a landslide. It is like essentially a return to the original Prince of Persia series, but adding a much more modern flair to it, more anime inspired flair. It is the best game they put out in that series in recent memory. And yet, because it didn't sell like hotcakes, it uh, is bad. And the team has gotten split up and they're working on something different instead of continuing working on that. And more on that, the publishing idea was stupid from Ubisoft. It was you're charging for that kind of game where most people would spend like 30 bucks, 20, 30 bucks on it. They charged $40 for it. And yeah, it's a good game. But that is a high barrier of entry. 
forty dollars for that kind of game. It just it just is. Most of his contemporaries are getting like twenty nine ninety nine or even like nineteen ninety nine. Are you asking for forty dollars, thirty nine ninety nine? That's a huge pill to swallow. So less people are going to want to play that. But that has nothing to do with the fault of the game itself. That's the publishing arm. That's the publisher's responsibility, right? Like they set the price. They set the price too high. They also, Ubisoft for some reason, didn't release it on Steam. So when you don't release it on the biggest PC platform by far, you only release it on Epic and your own stupid launcher, and you make the price way higher than its contemporaries, you can't be surprised that even though it is, again, a fantastic game, that people aren't playing it. It's too expensive, and we've been conditioned to wait for sales. But people don't like that in the investor space, so it's a bad game. It gets canned. Again, Dead Space Remake sold pretty well, but not well enough for EA because the expectations are always out of control. Square Enix is telling us that both Final Fantasy 16 and Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth underperformed underperformed what are these expectations what are the actual expectations for these games because none of them seem realistic i think they have these high impossible goals set in this crazy timeline and it's because they're seeing other companies like oh my god black myth wukong sold 20 million copies in like a month which is a lot of copies for black myth wukong but it's like call of duty sold 20 million dollar copies in a month people be like oh my god it's a flop because expectation for Call of Duty is to make a billion dollars in a weekend. The expectation for this series is to make a hundred million dollars in one day. It's to sell 10 million copies in a week, right? And what we lose with that is we do not allow, we allow these games to gain legs, just like in movie theaters. We're not allowing these movies to stay in theaters long enough to get some momentum. We're not allowing these games to be out long enough to actually find its audience. I mean, Concord, right? Concord costs, I think, like 200 million. I think every other estimation has been like way too high, but like like 200 million, still a lot of money. And after two weeks, they yanked it. They're probably bringing it back as free to play, but they yanked it after two weeks. I think a forty dollar price tag for a game in a genre that feels so much oversaturated was a bad idea. But you you don't just yank it after two weeks. Let it let it gain some legs. Let it. Try some things out before you just pull it. We are getting so adverse to allowing games to find an audience. Hell, in general, we have become so adverse as a society of letting things find its legs, letting things grow and expand, that if we don't get immediate satisfaction, if we don't have an immediate success, then it's 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 GG's. It's we tried, it sucks, we're going back to the safe stuff, right? And I hate that. I hate the fact that. We're probably not going to get another uh, Prince of Persia Lost Crown like game. They're going to go back probably to the drawing board and do another uh, big 3D adventure, uh, probably uh, Assassin's Creed S style, right? We are learning the wrong lessons here, I believe. At the end of the day, the reason why this is happening, like I've said a hundred times before, like I've said in one of my videos from months ago, it's corporate greed. Microsoft let go like 2,500 people this year alone and shut down studios across, right? They shut down studios, they merged all this stuff. People lost their jobs. Studios went under. Developers were out of luck. Teams disbanded. And yet the CEO made more money this year due to like stock buyback options than the previous year. In a down year, the CEO made more money. The same year where developers, people working in industry have been losing their jobs and their livelihood. Microsoft CEO made more money. That doesn't track. You're telling us that you have to make these cutting costs in order to be more agile and survive in the market, and yada, 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 yada. Yet you made like $70 million. I'm not a mathematician, but I feel like that's way fucking more than your employees. Weird how you guys make the decisions to focus on certain games. You made the decision to make uh, Arcane work on Redfall. 
You made the decision to close uh, Tango. You made that decision and you don't suffer for it. The people beneath you do. Hi-Fi Rush was a hit. They still got fucking got. So like, what's a hit? Does it have to be like Elden Ring? Because not every game's Elden Ring. That's why Elden Ring stood out. Not every game is Tears of the Kingdom. That's why Tears of the Kingdom stood out. So what is a hit? What are these expectations we are putting out there? Why is it never enough? Why does the line always have to go up? Why does a game have to make a billion dollars in a week? Why can you guys not set realistic expectations? You're talking about a market that's shrinking. You're talking about a consumer base that's obviously shrinking because wages have been stagnant and things are getting more expensive. So things are becoming more of a luxury, right? So people aren't going to have access to it. You're talking about paying $70 for a game. You're asking us to play these games forever with subscriptions with all this other stuff. And not just gaming. We have subscriptions for streaming services. We have rent. We have bills. We have everything to pay for. All this shit. Our wages have not increased. You guys, the big wigs, you guys are fine and rich. And yet you expect us to spend an ungodly amount of money pre-ordering your super deluxe ultra rare edition that gives you access two days earlier to a game. You expect us to do all these microtransactions to buy your battle passes, your season passes. You expect all of this and still it is not enough. We don't even own the games we purchase digitally. We own the license, which can be revoked at any time. And still, and still we buy these games and still it is not enough. And they'll never be enough. There are really no expectations that can be met because whenever you meet them or exceed them, that becomes the new expectation. And they don't factor in the other shit happening. They don't factor in that maybe this was the only game that came out this month and it was interesting and it really got a lot of buzz. But had it come out a month later, it wouldn't have happened. And now they think they can just release this game whenever it's going to make a bajillion dollars and it doesn't. Then it's like, uh oh, let's cancel the series. Because these big wig companies are only interested in putting out games that cost the budget of three blockbuster films because they think that's going to get them the most money. And we are seeing this not work and we are seeing the outcome of this consistently. Yet they do not learn. I don't even know what, like, I don't have a resolution for this that's going to be feasible. They're not going to just not do it, right? But we just are stuck in this holding pattern where what we as the audience have to buy these games up just so they will make them again, but they can't temper expectations and not have these every game cost uh, north of a hundred million dollars. You're not guaranteed that back. But if you make a realistic game to realistic budget, I think you'd be a lot better off. I mean, Animal World didn't cost $60 trillion and it was a real hit. I just, I, I just, maybe I'm just a dumb fucking idiot and I don't know what I'm talking about, but it seems like these expectations will never be met. And there will always be the need to cut costs, the need to trim down, to slim the fat, right? To, to get rid of the bloat because the big wigs never face an actual consequence for their poor decision-making skills. Their poor management doesn't reflect poorly on them. It reflects on the staff lower than them because they're going to get cut first. Ubisoft's strategy is so fucking stupid of putting uh, the Prince of Persia only on the Epic Store or on their Ubisoft launcher, $40, limiting its install base, limiting the, how much people can reach, and then just saying, all right, no more, this is done. Like there's so much incompetence at higher levels in these companies that are very apparent and yet they get to stay at those levels and the people who actually develop the game, who are the artists, who are the programmers, who are the coders, who are all those people, they get nothing. It just sucks, man. Like it sucks. All because of those words. Did not meet expectations.